What's going on, everybody? This is JVP. You're listening to another episode of the Post Game Report podcast. So I want to talk about Game Pass versus the PlayStation 5 and how stupid that sounds. See, the PlayStation has had PlayStation Now for quite some time. Now, PlayStation Now is $60 per year. It has over 800 games available. A lot of them you can actually download into your PlayStation 4 or PlayStation 5. Those games include classic exclusives that are only available on the PlayStation brand. Whereas Game Pass has, I think, a little over 100 games each month. Some of them rotate. Same thing with PlayStation Now, by the way. Not all the games, especially third-party games, will stay there forever. So they rotate. Same thing on Game Pass, which currently will cost you, uh, I think, $120 per year, something like that, because you have to pay $15 a month. It does include Xbox Live. And it does, I believe there's two tiers, but I'm talking about the top tier. With with uh, PlayStation Now, you only get one option. So you have two options with Game Pass. So the $15 per month option is called Ultimate. So Game Pass Ultimate. And that, that includes xCloud, which allows you to play a game uh, via stream on your phone or your tablet. And I believe some, you know, even if you had a laptop or something. And then Ultimate also includes Xbox Live, Game Pass, and I'm pretty sure that's it. I'm not, I'm pretty sure that's it. Those three factors. So with PlayStation Now, it does not include PlayStation Plus, which is the live version for PlayStation. So if you want to play any of the Call of Duties or anything like that against your friends, you need PlayStation Plus. But the thing with PlayStation Plus, they give you three games per month. And a lot of these games are really good freaking games. Some of them are available in PlayStation Now. But for example, we just got Final Fantasy VII Remake on PlayStation Plus. Which is great. And actually, there are features on the PlayStation, I believe... I believe with PlayStation 3, I don't I don't know if you get uh, share play, but I know PlayStation 4 you can. So if, uh, if I'm stuck on a level, I can contact someone on my friends list. And of course, they need PlayStation Plus as well. But they could take over my game and pass the level for me, right? Like all th- in, in the comfort of their living room. Same thing with a game like, let's say, Madden. TG1, Eddie, and I have played several games of Madden or MLB The Show. One of us will own a copy, and we will play multiplayer on that one copy. And then there are streaming capabilities. I just can't remember the name right now, but if I am somewhere with internet access... Or better yet, I could use my phone, which has 5G. I could log on to my PlayStation account and play the games that are on, uh, on. What the hell does on mean? <laughs> that are on my PlayStation 5 or PlayStation 4 or even PlayStation 3. Because I've done it where I played Madden football at a Starbucks that was uh, installed or either installed into the hard drive on my PlayStation 3 or it was sitting in the disk drive. So both consoles are sharing similar features, but Microsoft is charging you for certain features. And also Microsoft doesn't have the feature where you can basically share your game or have someone jump into your game and take over for you. The question is, why do people continue to use the game pass arguments because they're getting outriders which is a game that is coming out april 1st it's going to come out on launch day it's going to be available on game pass so far all we know is that 
if you want it on the PlayStation, PlayStation 5 or PlayStation 4, I'm not sure if it's coming out for both. Either way, you're going to have to pay full price. So if you've been paying $15 a month for Game Pass, you can play Outriders uh, day one on launch. Whereas with PlayStation, obviously, you got to pay full price in order to play it. The difference is you're renting on one side and you are owning on the other. Now, whether Outriders is a good game or not, it doesn't matter. The fact is people who have been subscribing to Game Pass will save some money by not having to buy Outriders. So that's an edge, right? I've talked I've talked about, you know, having the slight edge. But that is a service. And it's it's a service that PlayStation already has. <laughs> it is already available on PC. And I'm talking about PlayStation now. More games, more popular games, PlayStation exclusives, and the more downloadable games. For less money per year. So I don't know what this argument, and you know, you know, I got to give a slap on the wrist to those people who get into these arguments with people who bring up Game Pass. And for some reason, you guys let you let this fanatical fan base get to you to where you're arguing with them for no reason. If someone wants to say how great Game Pass is and how is the future? Well, you know what? <laughs> let them say it and let them prove it. Let Microsoft prove it. You could do all the talking now, but when it's all said and done, let's see where that statement gets them. Remember, the Xbox 360 was kicking butt for f- four to five years, maybe maybe less. But within those f- first four years, the Xbox 360 was dominating. But guess what? Sony was consistent. They did what they did. They changed things when it needed to be changed. And they learned a harsh lesson. It almost cost them. And we still got games like The Last of Us. So the software always dominates. All the talking and all the hoopla. That really doesn't matter at the end of the day. So people can say Game Pass is the future or Game Pass is going to dominate or... You know, PlayStation is scared because they're quiet and not announcing anything. They could talk all that. People tend to forget that during the summer, all these people were saying the same thing. Where's Sony? Are they scared? They don't have anything to show. What's going on? They're too quiet. They are arrogant. I I, I love that one. I love that one where people were saying, oh, my God, Sony is so arrogant. They don't want to tell us anything. Then all of a sudden they show a PlayStation 5 logo and the internet broke. (laughs) That's all Sony has to do. And people don't, you know, tend to remember that Sony has games in their pockets. So if they decide it, you know what? We do have a trailer or an official gameplay trailer for the next God of War. And here it is. Or, Or even Horizon Zero Dawn. If they did that, <laughs> the internet would, would freaking eat itself alive. And people would forget about all this Game Pass talk. The games are always what reign supreme. And quickly on Game Pass, you know, because people have been bringing up Game Pass so freaking much. And, and, and that's because Microsoft and Xbox has been bringing it up. So before I leave, I just want to remind people that Microsoft is famous for imitating what is already out. They are very famous for taking something that is working and trying to get into that market and take it over. And they don't succeed. They'll continue trying to take it over. Let me clarify that. Because that's how Microsoft was created. I mean, (laughs) they made, you know, little bits of software here and there, and then eventually hit on something and it worked. And then, you know, the whole IBM deal. 
So if you look at, you know, Surface, their Surface RT, which was the direct competitor to the Apple iPad. They make a totally different surface now. It's not the RT. The RT was a legitimate tablet, a, a competitor to the iPad. And it failed because of a lack of software in the marketplace. The same thing with the Zoom, same thing with the Surface Duo, which is a foldable phone. Um, but it's early. That market is really early. But Microsoft got into it early, so you never know. And then, of course, video games where they've tried they've tried to get in it the original xbox while had a lot of promise and some really good exclusives they got rid of it early went with the 360 it looked like they were in the right direction then they tried to copy what nintendo was doing and that's where it bit them in the ass because they were trying to take on sony and they had sony they had sony when they were down but then they tried to play to, to, to get too greedy and they saw that motion gaming market and it bit them in the butt. They were trying to do too much at once. They were trying to take on two industry giants, two industry legends at the same time. And that wasn't going to work regardless of how much money they have. The market will dictate who they want to go to. And by the time they got into mo to the motion... Nobody was really playing motion games anymore by that time. And I feel that is why they haven't gone into VR yet. Sony right now is the only one doing VR. We all remember Nintendo tried it many years ago. Sony has had, for the console side, obviously, some success with it. Uh, VR has sold pretty good. But Microsoft seems to be very reluctant to take on that market for whatever reason. And the only thing I can think of is because it's a hardware market. And they are trying, it seems to me, they are trying to steer clear from the hardware side of the industry and make Game Pass their service. Because quite frankly, once again, that's where Microsoft has made their name. That's where they've made their living through subscription services with Windows and, you know, Office, Excel, things like that. And so you, you look at who they're trying to compete with. It is not necessarily PlayStation with PlayStation now. It is Amazon. It is Google. And Google has somewhat taken themselves out of the market right now. Steam, things like that. They want to be everywhere. Microsoft, that is. Apple, don't forget Apple. Apple has their own arcade service. It is only, I believe, $5.99 a month. But you get pretty good games, I believe. There was one popular uh, Ubisoft game that came out. Um, Immortal Phoenix, I think. Is available on Apple Arcade and you can use it, you know, any controller you want, whether it's Xbox, PlayStation. You can play it on your phone, play it on your Apple uh, tablet, play it on your computer. I'm, I'm assuming that you need an iMac, so not just any uh, computer. So that's the disadvantage for Apple. Whereas with Game Pass, if it manages to, to hop on to the Apple ecosystem, then Microsoft is going to definitely take over Amazon, Steam, Google in that department. And maybe that is more than what they, uh, well, actually, maybe that is what they want. And maybe that's good enough for Microsoft. And the hardware version of the Xbox that we know could eventually go away. But it will live in the software realm in the cloud and of course with azure um you know i think i might have mentioned this where microsoft was in this uh, big battle against amazon for a contract with the government i believe it was called jedi to be there you know to use their cloud service because amazon has a huge cloud service as well 
So I don't know who won that one. I know Amazon was winning at the time, or or the judges were favoring Amazon, or the government was, but I got to look into that. But yeah, I mean, it's it's something totally feasible now. Microsoft definitely has the infrastructure, so maybe they realize, similar with the RT, similar with the Zoom, that they don't have the edge in one specific aspect, but they do have it in another aspect. And right now, with gaming, we have the hardware side, and now we have the cloud side. So maybe that's where Microsoft will dominate or eventually live. So we'll see. But anyway, uh, quickly, um, some of you have listened to me when I talked about Roblox, and uh, then I uh, actually on Twitter I, I mentioned Volkswagen because they came out with an electric vehicle, and both stocks are doing pretty good. So people got to start listening to a brother. I might be the old fogey, but I, I think I know what I'm talking about. So anyway, I'm JVB. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.